Hey, hey, it's Nathan Cole. How are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports. Uh, welcome to a special video today. Today, we are rebuilding one of the most beloved clubs in Germany. Yes, I am talking about St. Pauli. Yes, FC St. Pauli is the one that we're going to be rebuilding. A club out of Hamburg. A club known for... Jackie Chan. Their beautiful fans. Their fans that have always been very very supportive of this club no matter what happens if it goes down if it goes up and lately they have been doing well and i want to jump in there and i want to have some piece of this success currently san Pauli, if we take a look at it guys they are in the second bundesliga fighting to get promoted into the bundesliga itself they're fighting off some giants of Bundesliga football in terms of Werder Bremen, in terms of Schalke, in terms of Hamburg. All those teams are down there in the second Bundesliga at the moment, which makes it really look like one of the strongest ever lineups for the second Bundesliga. And I am now here to step up and go ahead and take them into the Bundesliga. And not only there, take them to the top of world football so if you guys are excited about this rebuild that we're going to be doing with san Pauli, please make sure to smash that like button that'd be very much appreciated support the channel and also let me know my friends did you know about this team before i told you or did you not because this team as far as i know is very much known everywhere like people this is like a this is like one of those clubs that if you don't support a team, like if you're not from Germany, you still know of it and you kind of support them. That's how it works normally with St. Pauli. The fans are crazy. I mean, just look at these nutters jumping around. But the main reason as to why St. Pauli is so loved is because their stance in politics. This club just really supports good causes in general. And it is one that needs to be showcased a lot more in the world of football. So if you guys don't know anything about San Pauli, I highly recommend. There's a documentary here that you can watch. The fans who make football, FC San Pauli featured. That one will make you kind of realize what this club is about. And hence why I want to jump in and do this rebuild. So let's get into it, my friends. And also, while we're going through this video, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions. I want discussions in the comments down below, and I need answers to my questions. The way we're going to do this rebuild, by the way, I want to do something uh, that I feel like I should be doing as well. Like, I've thought about this. I've thought about this for a while. I wanted to do a video on um, Ukrainian talents, but I felt like it it's not necessarily the time to do something like that because, I don't know, man, it's, it's a weird world we live in right now. And I just don't want to like profit off of it, if you understand what I mean. Like, I don't want to put out a video now, like a Ukraine sprint to glory. And then people would watch it because it has Ukraine in the title. It will probably get more views than anything else. But I don't want to do that and profit off of it. Just as a heads up, a couple of people have been asking me to do so. I don't want to do that. But since this video is not titled anything about Ukraine, I just want to let you know, in this video specifically, we want to go ahead and bring in some Ukrainian talents into this team. That is one thing I definitely want to do. So um, I think that the San Pauli squad would definitely agree with something like that. And the fans would love something like that to happen right now as well, I would assume. Um, because they tend to be on the right side of, of, uh, of politics most of the time. So let's jump in there. Without talking too much politics, let's talk football. This team right now, as you guys can see, is uh, playing in a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow formation, uh, which is obviously quite interesting. Burgstaller, I think this guy was the former Schalke striker, wasn't he? I personally don't know anything about their starting lineup, by the way. I haven't watched Sampaoli in a long time, so this is going to be interesting. We have Becker here, who is 21 years old. Interesting player, 69 rated. Medic looks young, 22 years old. T-Ice is the captain here. Zanda on the right-hand side. Bacarada on the left-back spot. Vazilj is in goal, 25 years old. And then we have a couple of interesting players on the bench as well. From what I know, Sampaoli doesn't necessarily have too many talents here. So what is the budget? As we go into the second Bundesliga season, not like the second Bundesliga, that's a league, not our second season in the Bundesliga. Um, we're going to be uh, dealing with 5 million. 
That's not necessarily a huge budget, is it? So let's make sure we spend it the right way. But of course, we will have to let a bunch of players go to be able to bring in even better players for the future. So Burgstaller, 32 years old, one of the highest rated players. We got to take our profits off of players like that. But as you can see, there are not that many old players in this team. There is only like two players, 30 and above. Anyone above 28, I like to let go initially and then build from there. Um, Yeah, how about a 76 rated youth academy kid to come into our team and just immediately be the best player in our squad? Yep, the youth academy has just given me potentially the highest rated player I've ever gotten out of it. This guy, Michael Werner, is coming in at the age of 17, center midfielder, six foot three, five star, five star, high attacking work rate. Um, yeah, he looks absolutely nuts. Michael Werner is the first official player to join in immediately into the squad. And I'm sorry, but I think he might have to pop in into cam. His stats are too good for center mid, right? Uh, oops, what the hell did I just do? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on. There he is, Werner. So, Werner, actually, he's not higher rated at cam. So, for me, then, it makes sense to pop him right in here. Werner, welcome to the club, pal. Five star, five star. What a beast. Hey, this is potentially the best kickstart we ever had to a rebuild. What a guy. The first player we are signing is from Ukraine. Bondar is coming into our team, my friends. It's a center back talent coming in from Shatya Donetsk. He is the one that we bring into our squad with hopes of him possibly leading the squad to big, big moments. So, you know what? I'm going to make him the captain of this team because he is officially the first one to come in as well. So, he comes in there. He's a right-footed uh, centre-back. Bondar, 71 pace, 71 defending, 72 physicality, 6 foot tall, only 22 years old at this stage of his career. Not necessarily a super high potential player, but that is what we do. We take these players, we don't only rebuild the club, we also, also build up the careers of low potential players. And this guy right here could be our man. So, Bondar, welcome to the club. And uh, you're our captain from now on. And of course, my heart goes out to the people that are currently suffering out there. I, I really, really pray every day that this thing just stops and... Those people can go back to their normal lives, man. Uh, it's it's horrifying. It really is. Um, I'm glad that um that we're all safe in our countries. I guess uh, the people that don't live over there. But uh, at the same time, you gotta you gotta think about like what type of situation these people are going through. I really really hope that this thing can be over very soon. I can't wait for it to be over. Um, but yeah, my thoughts go out to the people. Prayers to everyone. Much love and support to everyone in Ukraine. By the way, when earlier on I said uh, Sampali tends to be on the right side of history most of the time, I have to mention that actually back in the day during the Second World War and stuff, they were not necessarily on the right side of, of history. They were on the right side, if anyone knows anything about them. The video that I showed you guys, it's one that I watched myself, and it is mentioned that back in the day, they actually did support what the hell was going on. But the club has done a 180 degree turn and is like completely against anything like that now, which is great to see that things can change. And that's something that I personally kind of hope for as well. Like people need to see the good in people. Even if certain people are bad, they can become good people. No one is that one mistake they make in life. That's that's one thing you got to keep in mind. Like a lot of times what I see in these days, and this is obviously getting a little bit political and everything that we're talking about in this video. It's not necessarily something I wanted to say, but I personally feel like this whole cancel culture thing, like you can't judge a person by just one thing they have done. And also, even if you do judge them, at least it give them the opportunity to become a better person, right? At least that's how I feel about it. But anyways, guys, this is it. Ljubicic, here it goes. 10k, new player for the team. Hajduk Split has a young, talented Croatian striker, and I'm interested in him. San Paoli have brought in yet another player. And one thing I want to do with this squad actually is because San Paoli is so open to the world, I want to go ahead and bring in a player from like 
every single player that we bring in is from a different country, okay? So let's say we have brought in a Ukrainian player now in our captain. Now we have brought in a player from Croatia. I'm not allowed to bring in another player from Croatia. I have to bring in a diversity of uh, players into our club because diversity is very important to Sampali. So I'll go with that one, Ljubicic in the team now i'm excited about this one the left midfielder who is a striker gets taken out this guy is someone i've never used before so that excites me even more 76 pace 69 shooting 66 physicality he is six foot tall only 19 years old i'm excited to see this young creation do bits for our team the next player we're bringing in we're flying across all the way to brazil we are bringing in luis jr a goalkeeper i have never tried before but a man that actually looks somewhat talented. Doesn't have high potential, don't get me wrong, but I am fully confident that that man right there, Luis Jr., can become a legend at this club. That is the goalkeeper signing. Let me show you guys what his rating is. 68 rated at this point in time. If we go down into the stats right here, here we go. We take out our goalkeeper who was involved in the swap deal. Jr. comes in, takes over. And I do believe, yes, it is, a down, it is a downgrade, but this guy's only 20 years old, six foot four tall. I like that. Quite a tall goalkeeper. He's going to be the main man at the back alongside Bondar. So that is something I'm excited about. We've already brought in three players. I think the next one I want to bring in is going to be possibly a CDM. But in that CDM position, I don't want to go for youth. I want to go for someone who is like 24, 25 years old, has some experience already and can lead this team. One thing I want to mention, by the way, is I don't know if I said it correctly the last time. In the starting lineup, every position has to be filled with a player from a different nation. It doesn't mean I can't buy multiple players from the same nation. Because if I buy a player like Cullen that I've just brought in now as the experienced CDM, plays for RSC Anderlecht, obviously a big team in Belgium, now going to be joining our team. The man from Ireland is going to take over that CDM spot, brings in a little bit of experience, but also brings in well-rounded ability right here. I'm excited to have him in that spot. He's 25 years old at this point, five foot nine tall. He's going to be our Irish Kante. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does. But again, going back to the topic, every single position is going to be a different nation. That is the plan, at least. So that is a creation, uh, a creation pickup. That is a Republic of Ireland one, Ukraine, Brazil, we are going global. What a lovely final deal of the transfer window. Ngakia from Watford, the right back is coming into our team. The Englishman is going to take over that right back position, which really, really excites me because I do think this is going to be a class signing. He comes in at the evaluation of 3.3 million. We paid 3.6 for him and he takes over the position of Xander. He is going to be very important to us. He is a player who is 5 foot 10 tall with high attacking work rate. So an attacking fullback like the English ones like to be. Traits and celebrations, nothing there. Uh, I I've never actually seen a celebration one in here. Have you guys? Am I the only one that has never seen that, by the way? But pace-wise, looking good. Dribbling, defending, physicality, all of that we can work on. It's going to be important for our fullback to cover those wing positions and push forward as well. Uh, while someone like Becca or Cullen drops back and covers for him. I think this formation kind of allows the fullbacks to possibly join in on the attack as well at times if uh, some of those midfielders stay behind. So I'm excited about that. Ngakia is the final signing of season one. Now let's see if this team has it in them to actually get something done. Well, our center attack and midfielder, his release clause was just triggered in the transfer window. So we had to bring Verna, the youth academy talent, into the camp position and we are bringing in an Argentinian. So Santiago Simon is one that I am personally interested in bringing into this team. He's going to be a new part of the puzzle that we are putting together right now. Santiago Simon, very, very talented River Plate midfielder, very young as well, still gets 90 minutes playtime for that team at the moment. Most of the games he's playing full and uh, that's quite crazy considering how young he is. 72 rated is what he's coming in at, so that is great. 5.5 million in value and we are in January right now. Irvine was covering and Santiago Simon now comes in, takes over that spot and these two can swap positions, which is perfect.
Now, let's go to the end of the season. And I'm watching the last minutes between Crystal Palace and Manchester City right now. As a Liverpool fan, I'm desperately hoping, I'm desperately hoping that things are going to go well here and Crystal Palace can take it. But it's going to be a painful 1-0 win in the end for Manchester City, isn't it? Oh, Mahrez cross. Oh, they got it. Well, guys, the first season is over. <laughs> We're done right here. We won against Schalke. We beat, no, we got a draw against Werder Bremen. We got a bunch of draws here. I don't think we're going up, lads. It's not necessarily looking like it. Ooh, first season. San Paoli in real life has done better than I have, but I'm building for the future. I don't want to go up into the Bundesliga and then drop down immediately. That's the plan, right? We want to stay in the Bundesliga once we go up. That's at least what I'm going to tell myself right here <laughs> for this bad performance. 58 points, 34 games played. 44 goals conceded. Hanover goes up. Werder Bremen goes up. And Dusseldorf has to play in the playoffs. Good luck to them. Ljubicic. Plus four, I believe. Amen Nido has done well for himself. Vanna has gone up massively. Becker has gone up a little bit. Simon has gone up by plus one since he came in. Cullen has been a beast for us. Bondar up to a 72, which I love to see. Ngakia, 75 rated, my friends. Beautiful. Pacarada has done well. And Junior has gone up in his stats. And on the bench, by the way, Aremu is not doing too bad. Medic is doing all right. Lawrence is doing all right. Ritzka is doing all right. Like we have a bunch of players that are actual good backups for this team. So overall, guys, for the first season, I'm not unhappy. Yeah, we didn't get promotion, but ideally I would like to stay here for a little bit longer in the second Bundesliga and keep building. Because if we go up into the Bundesliga now, I'm pretty sure we're going to get crushed. So Ljubicic, 19 goal contributions in 33 games as such a young player that is massive. Amen Nido has done really well for himself here as well. Vanna has done well. Xander has done really well. And uh, in terms of assists, Vanna has been the main man. So overall, guys, let's see season two. I'm very happy. Oh, this season begins with a beautiful message. Crystal Palace have survived. They have done it. Nil-nil against Manchester City. Liverpool could actually do it. Oh my God. Imagine, imagine if we could become champions. Ah, please. Ah, 5 million to begin with, guys, in this season. Let's talk about that. Ah, 5 mil and 9 million. Okay, I can work with that. Now, a bunch of players, as far as I know, are leaving, uh, either going back from their loan deals into the team. Nothing major or leaving because their contracts have run out and they have found new teams. Yeah, T.I. has gone, so he's not in the team anymore. But mainly speaking, what do we need this season? We have Amen Yido here, who's still kind of young. It's all right, we can keep him. Ljubicic is fine, Werner is fine, Becker is all right, Simon is good, Cullen is good. Pacarada, 27 years old. Yep, we can go and replace him ideally. And then possibly a new center back as well. So new left back, new center back. With that money, we can actually bring in two quality players. Or we could play Ritzka on the left back position. Nah, this is a rebuild. We're going to bring in new players. That's what we're doing, right? So let's do that. The first signing we're bringing in is a talented player from Czech Republic. Yes, Vitek his name is. And has me excited because I've seen this guy's stats and I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe he's all right. His defending is his clear best stat. But the one thing that stands out is the fact that he's six foot four, a giant of a man coming in at the valuation of 4.2 million. We used one of our center backs in the deal just as a heads up. And uh, Vitek takes over. 71 rated, sure, not massively high rated at this point in time, but this guy, I think, could do really well in this team, could become a leader of this squad, only 19 years old, and we're in season two, so he starts at 18, as you guys can see here, and he looks very good. So I can't wait to see how good he's going to be for this team. Great deceptions, great aggression, good strength as well to go along with it. And of course, the defensive stats, the most important ones, look very good there with the stand tackle on 75. So we'll see how this one goes, hoping that this uh, Czech Republic gem will do a good job in that centre-back spot. This guy, yes, his name is Udogi here, but, uh, or it might be Udogie, I'm not too sure, but his names before that are crazy. I want to show you guys the new left-back of the team. I'm excited about this guy, Destiny Ienoma Udogie. That is his name. He's going to come in into our team now. Sampali have found a fullback. And obviously, since Sampali is 
completely against racism, someone like himself is going to be feeling great in this squad. So I'm very happy to bring in this amazing player, six foot one tall, left footed, and of course, he's going to be a big player for our squad. So Pacarada, we're going to take him out. We're going to sell him. And this new man is going to cover that left wing back spot and he can move forward a little bit more he has even more dribbling and pace so i like that a lot about him left footed high attack and work rate six foot one tall quite a physical player at the same time i believe actually no doesn't have that much strength interesting uh good amount of uh, sprint speed good stamina as well agility is actually quite good for his uh for his height 79 acceleration ball control dribbling is looking good no traits on these players, but I feel like these were the right signings for the season, guys. I can't wait to see if this team can actually pull it off this season. So let's see how this one goes. Good luck to the lads. Well, my striker got injured. I sold the left backs that were behind Udogie. He is now set up in that team to not be replaced through simulations. But we had to go in and get ourselves Ricardo Pepe, the American striker that just recently joined into a club in Germany, which is Augsburg. Hasn't really kicked off yet from what I know. I'm not 100% sure, actually. But the first couple of games I had seen from him, he came on as a substitute and nothing really happened. I wonder if he has actually kind of established himself as a starting striker now. He comes in at an evaluation of 5 million. Our main striker did get injured, which kind of forced me to make this move now, by the way. He was out for like six months. So I involved him into the deal. Pepe is going to come into our team. At first glance, he doesn't look great. I got to be honest with you. He has good shooting. He has all right composure, decent amount of strength and stamina, good reactions for an attacking player, and of course, very high finishing, which is very important. But again, a player with no traits. He is from America. I'm excited about this signing to play alongside Ljubicic. And now we can actually get on with the season. Well, it's looking like a good year, my friends. 2023 is maybe the year in which we go up because I'm seeing a lot of wins in this season. Now, St. Pauli, I would love to see up there. Hamburg derby coming up. And 3-0. There we go. Let's go, lads. Beautiful scenes. Lots of wins. We might go unbeaten. I haven't seen a loss so far. Right when I say it, we're probably going to lose the last game of the season. No, we didn't. Wait. Yes. Second in the league. No playoffs needed, baby. Come on, then. San Pauli now has earned its right to go up into the Bundesliga. Now, 70 points means we have been six points ahead of Heidenheim. That is great. And we have been 10 points ahead of any position that doesn't get any chance to get promoted. 66 goals scored, only 31 conceded, which is the lowest amount in this season. That's huge. That means our goalkeeper must have done a good job, but he got injured. <laughs> That's great. Junior went up to a 73. I really hope that is not going to be a long-term injury. A 73 rated goalkeeper in the Bundesliga could honestly be a problem. We might have to think about that one. Bondar done well. Vitik done really well. Udogie has done well here. Engakia, love it. 80 rated. Simon has gone up nicely. Cullen has gone up plus one. Becca, nice growth. Original San Paoli. Verna up to an 85. Probably one of the main reasons as to why we're up here. Pepe has grown a lot in his stats. Ljubicic is looking just quality. He's all about pace and shooting at this point. It looks like that boy needs some dribbling. But the performers have been in the attack. Pepe, Simon, Verna, and Ljubicic only six goals this season. Matanovic has gotten seven goals and two assists off the bench. Okay. <laughs> this Eintracht Frankfurt Loney is going to be leaving our team at the end of this season, I assume. Verna with the 17 goal contributions. Ricardo Pepe, first season. The American is on fire. That's good to see at least. And Becca got 10 assists. Let's go, buddy. Lovely season. So, hey, here we come. Bundesliga football. San Pauli is coming for you. The Bundesliga season begins with 8 mil in the preseason tournament. But I do believe promotion gets you some good cash. And it will be 31 million. Yes, I like that. Where do I spend it? Ooh, you know what? 
Maybe it's time to move on from Cullen. He was a great man for our team, has serviced us long enough. And Aremo has grown behind him, by the way. This kid is doing a great job. Uh, that's going to be a great backup for the future. But I would like to bring in someone higher rated to control that midfield. That CDM position is so pivotal in this team. So I want to bring in someone big into that spot immediately. And uh, the rest of the team, man, I'm happy. And I hope you guys are as well. I know Junior is a little bit of an issue. We got to be careful with him. But we did have the lowest amount conceded last season. So I'm thinking his potential should be looking good for this year. So I've gone for Florentino. This guy I remember in like FIFA, like two FIFAs ago. He was quite a huge talent, but I haven't really heard much of him. So Florentino comes into the team at a 78 rating, which is beautiful. Valued at 19.5 million, replacing Cullen in the team. Brings in great defending, physicality, and an okay amount of dribbling. Not a lot of pace, not a lot of great passing as well, but he is six foot tall. He is from Portugal, the first Portuguese player in the team. I'm happy to welcome him, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can pull off this season. One thing I'm realizing right now is I need a backup striker. That is another signing we're going to make right now. The player I'm going for is Jung San Bin. Yes, he is from Korea. He comes into our team and I'm excited about this backup. He comes in from Grasshoppers, actually, which is interesting. I wonder if he just joined them this season and if he's doing well over there. If anyone is a Grasshoppers fan, let me know in the comments down below. Jung San Bin comes in 5'9", 71 rated. Going to be a quality backup, I assume. Obviously not necessarily Bundesliga level, but our strikers aren't that high rated anyways. So it is a good signing nonetheless. I'm very happy with that one. And uh, just overall looking at the team right now, I'm just wondering, like, do I need any other backups? I don't necessarily think so. I think we're quite fine with the way we have built this team at this point in time. I think we're all right. Yeah, we can get into the season first Bundesliga year. If we don't get relegated, I'll be pretty pleased. Well, that's here we are. And I'm seeing a win against Bayern Munich in the month of February, which is quite impressive. Now we return to normality, losing three games back to back. But it's beautiful to see St. Pauli win against Dortmund as well. So we seem to be performing against the top performers in the league. But we need to be a little bit more consistent. In April, three wins, one loss. This could be a mid-table finish, you know. From what I'm seeing right here, San Pauli is sixth. Let's go. Oh, that is, un that is unbelievable. I can't believe that. Genuinely, that might just be one of the best performances I've ever had. Considering how low our team is rated. Honestly, like if you think about the, the, the starting point for this season, <clears throat> and if you think about uh, our goalkeeper only being 76 rated now, there's no way this should this team should be up there. Who has been the man? Pepe and Ljubicic at the same rating. Werner 88, he's obviously leading the line. Becker with the 78. Uh, Simon with the 82. Florentino has grown nicely. Udogie, Vitic, Bondar, and Gakia, they have probably done a great job this season for us to get to where we are right now. Junior, love it. The backup has gone up by plus four, I believe. That is a plus four, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, just generally speaking, guys, I'm very happy with how things have gone here. Jong Sangbin and the rest of the team, they look class. So, who has been the main performer? Who has been the one? Whoa. Hold on a second. Why? We don't have outstanding performers. How did we make it into the top six? Hey, it seems like it was a team effort, guys. It really does. Very impressed with the substitute here. Coming on for 19 games, getting seven goal contributions. Simon with the seven assists himself and four goals as well. Pepe has done really well. Where's my... Where's Ljubicic? Ljubicic has three goals. Oh, buddy, 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 buddy. That is not good enough. We need to step that up. That is for sure. We are nowhere in there in terms of the top eight for the goal scorers. That really shows. And a goalkeeper of the tournament. Hold on. Really? Hey, Junior. He has gotten eight clean sheets. So it's actually down to the low rated goalkeeper. Get in, pal. Beautiful. All right. 
We move on. First season in the Bundesliga. Somehow finished in the top six. I doubt we will pull that off again next season. I still don't know how the hell we just managed to do that. Well, the new season, the money is going to be very important because a lot of our players are wanting huge wages at this point. So what's it going to be like? 47 million. Now, looking at the starting lineup, you would say, ideally, I need to go ahead and get a new goalkeeper. But after his performances, it would be an absolute disgrace of a coach to go ahead and let him go after he was the goalkeeper of the season. Junior stays, and I trust in him. Uh, for the rest of the team, though, I'm looking at options. <sighs> Here's the thing, man. I like youth academy players, but I don't know. It feels like cheating. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's for me like can you guys let me know in the comments down below please this is very important to me do you actually like it when we have a youth academy player that starts off with us and because i have the ultimate version of the game it constantly gives me a really good one every single time or do you not want me to use them that would be very interesting to see uh, i guess for this one specifically we're going to keep vanna because he has been here for, since the start of the uh of the sprint to glory here and he has been great for the team so I really do wonder what to do here. And uh, yeah, uh, apart from him, I am pretty confident with how things are going. I need Becca to keep on going up. Five star, five star at this point. Vitik, Bondar both need to reach at least 80s. I might go into January and then make a decision because right now I'm very confident with the team, the way it's set up. Like I have a striker backup. I have a center mid. I have a, a CDM. Uh, I also have a right back, a center back, a goalkeeper. I'm okay with the way things are going. Well, Europa League, we are going ahead and beating CSK. We are moving on and uh, we're stepping up against Lazio. Okay, can we beat them as well, please? Yes, we can. Come on then, Sampaoli. Europa League winners, AS Monaco could be tough. Very talented players in there. 1-0 loss. 3-1 win. Let's go. Semi-finals. Go on then, Sao Paulo. Yes. Oh, my God. 5-1 victory. And we're in the final against Arsenal. And we're in the cup final as well. Mate, what the hell is going on? Why is this team overperforming so much? I don't have those insane players. So, where are we in the Bundesliga right now? Bundesliga, second. No way. Ah, oh, that is a disgrace. Oh, that pains me now. We just missed it by goal difference. Are you kidding? Why is Hertha Berlin up there? What happened to Bayern Munich? What the hell happened to Leverkusen and Dortmund? Bro, this is one of the oddest rebuilds we have ever done. I don't know what the hell is going on with these teams. What I can tell you, though, is... Oh, Becca! Let's go! Great growth! Lubicic 85, Pepe 86, Werner looking solid, Simon looking incredible, Florentino is continuing to improve ever so slowly, Becca has had a big jump this season, I like that, Udogi I believe plus 2, Vitek and Bondar both above 80 now, which is necessary, love that, Ngakia in that right back spot is looking good, and look at Junior, he is on fire man, love that, and Jung Sanbin has been a great player for us man, on the bench, I like that a lot. And uh, let's take a look at the stats. Much better. Ljubicic going from three goals last season to 27 this season. Pepe 21, Werner 16 and 7. Simon again, an incredible year for him. And Becca steps it up one more time. Love it, lads. What a year it has been. Can we cap it off? With two victories in the cup competitions. This is going to be very hard against Borussia Dortmund. But it could work. And it doesn't. Jorginho, out of all the players, it had to be Jorginho scoring the penalty, man. Oh, the pain and suffering of San Paoli here coming in through Borussia Dortmund. Please, let's not lose two finals in a row. That would be devastating. We're up against Arsenal to finish it off, though. Arsenal, how about this one, lads? Come on, San Paoli. Actually, you know what? Before I go into this game, I'm going to pump up my team's uh, performance by going ahead into the press conference. This is something I do on the Venezia career mode on Facebook Gaming. If you guys don't follow me over there, fb.gg slash sport 7 That is where we do the Venezia career mode. And soon we're going to be doing the Academy career mode over there. 
So just a heads up, uh, it is like simulating series that we go through on a daily basis. But now against Arsenal, after boosting up the confidence of my players, Mr. Rebuild and his team are ready to take on Arsenal. Let's finish off this season with a banger. They have great players, but I have the better ones, right? Oh man, their team is actually looking very good. Come on. Come on, St. Pauli. No, again on penalties. You have to be kidding, man. It's a season of us. It was so close. That's that's the best thing we can call this season. It was so close. We got to the second spot in the Bundesliga, lost out on a title due to goal difference, and then we lost in a penalty shootout in a cup, and we lost in a penalty shootout in the Europa League. I really hope this doesn't give the players a big hit in their morale. I still hope they are <clears throat> aware of the fact that they had a great season so far, man. What a year it has been for San Paoli incredible stuff after that success or failure of the last season however you want to look at it we are now in a champions league club so that is great and that comes with a lot of money 110 million to spend but again man i'm already getting too attached to the players that i have in this team and yeah i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in backups that are actually like kind of higher rated players the only i guess two or three i'm actually happy with is jong san aremu smash and then um lawrence here or actually even xander as well so ideally i want to replace irvine and rogo and bring in possibly two centimates because i have a really good cdm here so let's bring in two centimates into the team as backups well the signings have come in a spanish lad in the name of baena comes into the team to be a replacement for one of our midfielders especially in terms of attacking he, he actually looks very good so he could come in as a cam as well and then we have brought in a player from morocco who looks extremely well balanced male i've never used him before left footed 26 years old at this stage Looks like a really good backup to our team as well. So overall, I'm actually really happy with what we have done here. And, and you know what? I might... Uh, do I bring in another centre-back? Nah, I, I think I'll keep... Actually, no, I do bring in a new centre-back. This guy's 32. All right, one more centre-back to come in. So as a backup, I have gone for... Oh. Oh. <laughs> I made a mistake. Um, I'm only allowed to have one player from each nation. And we already have Simon. So... Uh... Yeah, God says this is a bit awkward now. <laughs> he, he's off. He's from Argentina. Um, sorry, lads. We're going to have to move you on. <laughs> sort it. Cuesta comes in. He is not from Argentina. He's from Colombia. So that is a great deal for us. Now, I genuinely feel like we are fully ready for whatever's to come this season even Champions League football. Well, my friends, I said it is a Champions League season and we beat Barcelona in February 2026. It's way too early for us to get into a Champions League final, but if we could make it to like a semi-final, I'd be very happy. We get past Barcelona already. Round of 16, massive victory. Liverpool, no chance. Oh yeah, I knew it. No chance. Absolutely no chance. Yep. 2026, Liverpool smashes us to pieces as we hopefully at least... Go ahead and try and win the Bundesliga title, but things are not necessarily looking too great. I've seen a lot a lot of losses so far. We are up in the cup final, though, which is good to see. So we'll play that one immediately and see how San Pauli does in this case. Um, San Pauli, here we go. So please do well. Kramaric playing for Gladbach at this point. Is that going to be enough or is our team too good? Are you kidding? Man. Okay. We lose, we lose, we lose the cup, we lose everything. Unreal. How do we do in the league? Please tell me we won the league title. Please, please show me. We're second. Again, with just one point. Oh man, what the hell? What the hell is going on? Gladbach beat us to the cup and also the league title. Bayern Munich and Dortmund are sixth and seventh. What is going on with this career mode? I am going to lose my mind. Now the team itself though, Unbelievable. Ljubicic, Pepe, Werner, Becker, Simon, Florentino, Vitic 86, Bondar 84, Engakia 87, Udogia 87. Junior gone up by plus two, I believe, this season. And the boys on the bench have done a decent job as well, I reckon. But it wasn't enough to win a trophy again. Despite the, all the growth that we have had, it seems like the individual performances have gone down a little bit. Ljubicic 20, 
21 and 3. Pepe 18 and 2. Werner 10 and 12. Simon again with a 16 goal contribution season has done well. But I gotta say, man, I am I am disappointed. I, I kinda am. I kinda hoped we would win the Bundesliga title at least. What's going on with this team? I still have a bunch of money to spend, which I probably won't in the next season because I like these players a lot. I really hope Bondar can keep on keep on going up in his stats. Becca already way past his potential, which is great to see. But guys, we gotta perform better than what we are doing right now. This is unacceptable. Our team has to be up there winning titles. It's 2026. Now, I don't care about the money this season. I just want to see the boys perform, of course. It's going to be very important going into this new year. Uh, it seems like most of our players are out in internationals, so at least the international coaches really, really like our players. I'm shocked that Ljubicic doesn't play for Croatia. Like, what the hell? Who is playing for him? Guys, I have to tell you, the goalkeeper and one of our defenders, their release clauses were triggered. What the hell is going on? I'm getting beaten by everyone. I had to get them back after as well. So um, it was a bit of a weird season. All those guys are back. We get past Barcelona, which is great to see. It brings back confidence into the team. Manchester City, a 1-0 win and another win. Wait, wait, what? We beat Manchester City? Are we actually good enough? Manchester United, 2-1 win and... And... Yes! Let's go! San Paoli in the final. No cup final this time. And I'd be very surprised if I could see our team at the top of the Bundesliga after some of the games I've seen here. So, the top scorer, Castellanos for Leipzig in the Champions League. GG, that might be Leipzig or is that Salzburg? That'd be re really surprising. But what I want to see is, come on then, Bundesliga, Bundesliga. Yes, San Pauli has done it. 72 points for the club that is known around the world and beloved around the world. This is beautiful, man. Sampali with the 72. Get in. And then, of course, we take... Ooh, we take a look at the players here in terms of performances. Ljubicic, great job. 33 and 4. Pepe, 19 and 5. Werner, 17 and 7. Simon, 10 and 4. Becca, again, with a ridiculous season. Up to an 88 rating at this point. This is just great stuff, guys. Has me very excited about going into the Champions League final. And uh, yeah, winning the Bundesliga is obviously huge. But the team itself, man, it's only like how many players? One, two. I mean, there's plenty of players actually below 90. Uh, we have like, what? One, two, three, four. Only four players above 90. That's interesting. That is very interesting to see. Huh. Maybe this team shouldn't be here already, but they are. And I love it. This guy's all about pace and shooting. Always has been. But he has become a five-star, five-star player now. Pepe can skill, but he can't shoot with his weak foot. We got to keep that in mind. Werner looks quality. Becca looks incredible. Simon as well. Everyone in the attack is a five-star skiller. And the midfield as well. Beautiful. Even the fullback is up to five-star, five-star. This is just genius. All right, guys. We're about to have some fun against Real Madrid. At least I hope so. Who is Real Madrid coming in with? And uh, who's going to be the main man for them? I wonder. Benzema and Vinicius Jr. are doing it for them in real life. Who's going to do it here? It's going to be Vinicius, Olmo, Chiesa, Bellingham, Mount, Milinkovic, Savic, Varan, Militao, Dodo, Hernandez, Courtois. That team is good. San Pauli, of course, coming in with the iconic colors of the club. Real Madrid as an opponent. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful moment for us as we step into it. It's the Blancos against the Black Kits here, basically. Let's see how this one goes, guys. Hopefully, we have a beautiful game. I love the fact that some of these lads have red shoes. It fits really well with this kit uh, combo. Ngakia straight away. We want to go ahead and showcase our abilities. Pepe. Pepe does not look anything like Pepe there, actually. Or is that just me? Anyways, first attack. It's stopped by these lads. Yes. Let's go, Dogie. Love that. Into the center. Werner brings it into Pepe. Pepe gets past one. Lobs it inside. Ljubicic with the first chance. I'm going to try and find Pepe here at the near post because I feel like he's going to be the best one to try and go after. Nothing comes off it, though. Oh, that's a beautiful ball over the top. Vinicius Jr. Vinicius Jr. getting chased down by Ngakia. Oh, he gets past him way too easily. I needed that one. Go on, defenders. Let's go. Beautiful defending. I I like that, man. That's quality from Sampaoli here. Let's bring it over to the left. 
into the center. Pepe. Oh, I love the fans. They're singing. San Paulo. Into the center. Hubicic. Nah, man. I wanted to get that counter going. Beautiful ball over the top. Vinicius Jr. takes out Ngakia. He's doing a madness right now. This is looking very dangerous. He didn't shoot yet. And there comes the tackle from Udogi. I love that. Once again, the defense stands strong in the most important moments. Uh-oh. Real Madrid is a very dangerous man. Might just be one of the strongest opponents I've played against in a Champions League final in some time. Ah, uh, that is that is very disappointing. It is Jude Bellingham scoring the goal. Congratulations to him. I thought we were defending well, but in that position, Real Madrid was just too overwhelming. Oh, no, man. Nah, yes, Ngakia, come on. Well, the first half is over and we are losing in the Champions League final. Sampaoli is struggling against this very, very strong Real Madrid team. And you can see it in the stats as well. I need to be doing better. Uh-oh. This is very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. My God. 66th. Our goalkeeper is annoyed. Come on then. Come on then, Becca. Jubicic, make that run. Let's go. That's the pass. That's the pass to get us back into the game in the Champions League final. What the hell, man? How do I not score that? Why am I not taking a finesse shot or something? What am I doing? Your pose. Jump for it, Pepe. Jump for it. Becca, outside the box. Go for it. Yes, Becca. Green time. Becca, let's go. Oh, mate. I haven't scored a finesse shot in years, I swear. Oh, man. That feels great. Becca scores from outside the box in a Champions League final. Look at that beauty. Courtois stands no chance. It's like a finesse shot, lob type shot. Anyways, who cares? We're in there again. We are able to win this. Fight for it, lads. Yes, Florentino, good press. Oh no, he's completely open there in the center. Becca has to come back and help here defensively. What the hell has this guy? Vinicius, can you stop being as good as you are, please? You're really annoying to play against. Um, now we move, though, with Florentino. Jubicic, I need, I need better runs than this. Come on, Florentino. Great carry of the ball. Here goes Pepe. Pepe. I love that Pepe. I love that Pepe. Go on and shoot, lads. Just shoot. Perez jumps up, gets that one under control again. That Perez, Florentino. Why am I calling him Florentino Perez? Isn't that Real Madrid's... <laughs> Is that Real Madrid's president or something? Here we go. Simon has been very quiet this game. Great cross. Werner doesn't get it. I can't switch over to Pepe for some reason. Becca goes for it again. Becca goes for it again. Becca, Becca, Becca. I love it. Over to the top. Simon, can you shoot? He can. Man, we are bombarding Real Madrid right now with attacks. I love it. Well, we're going into extra time, my friends. Yep, it is happening. Oh, no, that's a good pass. Why did I pull my defender out of position again? Vinicius just once again. Ridiculous, ridiculous movement from him. I just cannot stop this kid. Wow. I'm struggling, man. I'm having a, such a hard time defending against him. It's actually ridiculously hard to pull off, especially with the ultimate difficulty and the settings with the, what's it called? Like, not the player-based difficulty, the other one, competitive mode. They just skill you out of your mind. It's, it's crazy. Becca, well done. Great movement here from the team. I like this. I like this a lot. I like the run of Florentino here. Florentino brings it back. Pepe is through. Pepe is through. Pepe is through. The American scores in the Champions League final. Come on then, Pepe. Comes in from the Augsburg team into our squad and does exactly what was necessary. What a guy. Great passing. Florentino once again involved. And I think that might have been Werner with the assist. Come on. Nice steal, Simon. Hey, let's go, dude. Love that. And here goes Simon again. Simon. Simon. This is beautiful. Can he find a pass through? Oh, what is that from Simon? Werner. Unbelievable. Simon. That might have just been the play of the game. Incredible. Defensive work. The pass in between all those players to find Werner in the center. Man, all I can do is clap. Uh, clap. This is incredible. 
Wow. Wow. That looked beautiful, didn't it? Look at that pass. Ljubicic jumps over it and we score. Simon, you're quality mate and you just secured the Champions League trophy for our team. Ah, decent try from Real. They're not going to be able to get this done though. Simon, here he goes again. Simon, can he find Ljubicic? He can. Ljubicic, you still haven't scored. Let's give you another chance. Actually, far post. I'm sorry, but I got to do it. I got to do it. Ljubicic, thank you for the assist. Werner with the brace in the Champions League final. He is clearly the man of the match. He has two goals and an assist to his name. Werner, the Youth Academy player, has been the difference in this one, lads. What a game. Real Madrid was really tough to play against, but in extra time, our boys seem to be doing so much better. Well, that is it. San Pauli and what they stand for at the biggest, biggest stage in world football. Champions League final. Here it is, my friends. It is done. San Pauli have done it. And now, if something like this was to ever happen, trust me, this team would gain so many fans because there are still so many people out there that don't know about this club and what they stand for. But um, it's a beautiful club and we have taken them to the biggest trophy. I'm so happy. And here is the trophy. The Ukrainian center back lifting the trophy. I feel like that is a very significant moment here for us as we finish off this video. Once again, guys, at the end of the day, I just want to say I hope everyone just can get along, man. It's 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 a very naive thing to believe in, right? It's, it's kind of uh, something that probably will never happen um, because the world is the way it is. But I wish for people to get along and for stuff like this that is going on in this world right now to not really happen anymore. I thought it would never happen again, but we are here again and it's happening again. So hopefully humanity in itself can come together after what's happening right now and just say, hey man, this is just not it. We, we should not be fighting each other. We should be working together because at the end of the day, if you look into the universe, we are so freaking small and we're just fighting over this small grain of sand on this massive beach filled with tons of tons of sand right so yeah let's just get together and uh may love and peace prevail guys thank you so much appreciate you all san paoli has done it have a great day take care and peace